Math 152, we're going to dig into the first part of section 2.3. And in this section, we're going to we're going to still look for volumes of rotations, but we're going to look for it uh, with another technique that's cylinders. And sometimes this is a really convenient uh, technique. So I'm going to have some function f of x. It's got some shape. Boop, boop, boop. I'm going to run it from a to b. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this shape and again, run it from A to B. Notice it's in terms of X. And I've got this shaded region here. And I'm going to rotate that, though, around Y. So, you know, I get some shape, something like that. It's got it like that little indent down there that came with it. And now, um, before, what we were doing before with... Uh, with disks is we would actually turn this into something in terms of uh, of y instead of f of x it'd be f of y and then we'd have to do this in parts because part of this would be like this top part would be a washer this bottom part would be disks what we're going to do in this unit is we're going to look at uh, cylinders on this shape so if i think about some rectangle here notice i have some change in x here what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate that whole thing around. And so notice if I wrote that, rotate that around, it's starting to be difficult to see the picture. But what I get is like a cylinder. I'm going to lift that, I'm going to lift that out of there. So I get is something that looks a little bit like this. And so notice what I what I have here is I have some height. And that's my f of x. I have some diameter, right? The distance from the middle to the edge. Notice that's just my x value. Um, and then I have a hole in the middle like that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about um, this as a bunch of concentric cylinders. There's a good picture in your text uh, that I that I snagged for this to look at. So notice, like, there's my f of x, there's that shape. That shape is getting, uh, that shape right there, think of that as getting rotated around. So it gives me this cylinder. I have this little change in x here. Um, I have this height, which is f of x. And I have this radius, which is that x distance. And then you can think of, that was just one piece. If we had a bunch of pieces, you know, a bunch of rectangles, we would we could approximate this with these concentric uh, cylinders, these concentric rings. So this cylinder, notice it has uh, a hole in the middle of it, right? With this with this change, this little change in uh, in X here. So let me think about this. I could I could cut this and and fold it out. So I'm going to, like I said, cut it here. Fold it out, and I get this rectangle that has this little bit of width to it. So that width, right there, that's my change in x. Right, that's like how long the lip is here. That height is f of x, and then I have this distance here. This distance is the distance around the outside. So that distance around the outside, um, that's the circumference of a circle. So if I have a circle with a with a radius of x. Um, 2 pi times the radius, 2 pi x. So this distance is 2 pi x. And so now if I want the volume of this thing, it would be uh, 2 pi times that x value uh, times f of x, right? So base times height times width times that change in x. So for a certain x value, that is the, the volume of one of these cylinders with a hole in it. And so if I just want to add them all up, uh, let's we'll let that run from one to n, right? If I wanted to split it into seven cylinders, I could split it into seven and, and repeat that, right? This is basically my, like my x size. Um, and keep repeating that. But remember, what we can do is this calculus, let this run to infinity. And so we have an infinite number of these little rectangles. So then what we have is this formula. And this formula will sum up all of those um, infinite a number of 
cylinders with an infinitely thin change in x, right? We're letting that run to infinity. This is our uh, basic formula for when we are rotating around y. And notice what's nice about this is we're rotating around i, but we're solved for x, right? We don't have to switch it over to being solved for y. We can do it uh, that way. And sometimes this way is more efficient. Sometimes it's not. Let's dig in and do a couple examples. All right, so we have this function, f of x is 1 over x. Uh, we're going to let x run from 1 to 3. And, and we're going to take the area below this, between it and the x-axis, and then we'll rotate it around y. So get a little shape of that. You can use Desmos, uh, something like that. But if here's my graph, here's one, here's three, my shape would look something like that. So there's my shape. I'm taking this area down below it here. So this part down in here. And then I'm going to rotate it around. Uh, the y-axis, it's a little long. Hopefully you can see the, the shape we'll get. And we want to find that volume. So we're going to do this by cylinders. So let me think about this. Um, I'm going to have my change relative to x. So there's one of my little sides. Think about that coming around and making my cylinder. So what I like to do is I'm going to pull that cylinder out of there. I like to just sketch this for the first few till I till I feel really comfortable with. It. Well, one thing I know is the radius, the distance from the center here to the edge. Well, that's that's x. Um, so I've got this radius of x, and then the uh, the height. Well, that's what one over x tells me, right? That that's this part right here so the height is 1 over x so so far so good and then if i if i take that and i fold it out right cut it and slice it i know that again this is the circumference the distance around so 2 pi times x this height is the function 1 over x and then i have this little uh little change in x, whatever that is. I know that I'm going to let that get infinites infinitesimally small. Great. So my setup for this then, and it's running from 1 to 3. So my setup for this, for this should be 1 to 3. Uh, well, it's just the volume of these, right? So 2 pi times x times 1 over x dx. And then I can uh, go ahead and do that integral, and I'm on my way. And uh, Oftentimes, I will, I'll take the 2 pi out, just uh, simplify stuff. Uh, x times 1 over x is 1. So this would be uh, 2 pi as x runs from 1 to 3. 4 pi and whatever the units are cubed. So there's my volume uh, for that. And again, that u stands for units. That's not u substitution. Distinguish, so there's that. Right, let's do another one. So f of x is x squared. We're going to let that, so that shape, and it runs from 1 to 2, so that shape looks like this. It got so crazy steep. And it's going down to the x-axis. So there is our piece that we're going to rotate. Um, oh, yeah, rotating around y again. And what's, again, I want to point out, like, with the cylinder method, when we're rotating around y, everything's going to be in terms of x. Uh, and if we were rotating around x, everything would be in terms of y. So here is, uh, you know, our little change in x. Yeah, it's right from 1 to 2. And if we were to rotate this thing around, that have this kind of cone, like, curved cone shape down into a space um, and there we go and now my cylinder is going to look something like that so I'm just going to pull that out of there and again I just like to sketch it just to think about all the pieces so that distance is x right that's what x does so the radius is x 
the height is and just the function, so x squared. And so if I think about cutting this and folding it open, it would be a shape that looks like this, where I have some change in x, right? That's that distance here between that and the hole, which I'm letting go to the zero. This is x squared. And then since this is the circumference around that circle, 2 pi times the radius. So now I can set up my integral. I know I'm running from 1 to 2. 2 pi times x times x squared dx, right? Length times height times width. So I'm going to pull that uh, 2x out of there. These get multiplied together, x cubed dx, and you can do the rest. Uh, you can do the rest from there. You end up with 14 pi over 3. Go ahead and do one more. Well, I should say another one. So we've got this shape, uh, 2x minus x squared. We're going to have it shaded from it down to the x-axis. x is going to run from 0 to 2, and it's going to be around the y-axis, uh, rotated around y. So my shape would look like this, yeah, from 0 to 2. So notice there's the part right there that I'm rotating. I'm rotating it around y. So my shape will look something like that. So I would have some little chunk, some little change in y there. Uh, sorry, change in x there. If I rotate that around, maybe a cylinder it looks like that. So I'm going to lift that out of there. That little lip is my change in x. Uh, this distance. Center to edge is x, so the radius is x. And then the height is the function, in this case, uh, 2x minus x squared. And so if I think about cutting that, folding it open, there's my change in x. I have this height, 2x minus x squared. And then the radius of that circle, I'm sorry, the diameter of that circle is 2 pi times the radius. So the volume of this thing is uh, length times width times height. Oh, that should be an X. And I'm going to take the integral from 0 to 2. Notice, like, this takes care of that hole in there, too. If I was trying to do this by methods, I'd have to, like, chunk this part minus that part. Um, you know, if I was trying to do it by washers, that'd be a lot of work. And I'm, I would pull the 2 pi out. 0 to 2, that's going to get distributed into there. Remember to multiply that into there. Uh, 2x squared minus x cubed dx, and you're on your way. And you can get there. You can get there from there. Uh, this one ends up being. We'll notice that what we've been doing here is we've been going rotating around the y axis, right? And we used, uh, we used this part. <laughs> we used this part. So now what we're going to do is we're going to rotate around the x-axis. And what will happen is it's the same idea. I run it from whatever those y values are, but it's 2 pi times y uh, times the function terms of y, and my change is relative to y. So that, that's, that's around the x-axis. Again, in this technique, use the, the other variable um, from what you're rotating it around, which is different than the disk method. And if looking at this one, this is already solved for x. That's already in terms of y. Everything's in terms of y, so I don't need to do any. Oh, and it's rotated over the x-axis. So we're going to get the volume of the solid that happens. So I can plug that into Desmos, get the shape of it. Uh, the shape of that looks like this. And notice it's running from 0 to 4. So, And those are y values. It's running from 0 to 4. It's this part. Um, to the y-axis, so this is what's shaded. This is the part that's being rotated, and it rotated over the x-axis. So that would go like this. So notice um, it has a hole in the in the middle of it, right? Like the outsides in it has this curving cone on the inside of it. So. Now, since I'm rotating over the x-axis, things are going to be in terms of y. So my change is a change in y. So my, my rectangle is... 
right? Because I'm rotating it this way. Pull that out of there and try and draw it. So now, if I think about these shapes, my radius is here. Notice my, my radius, I should actually do it this way. It'll be easier to, to see its value. Notice my radius is Y, right? How high it is. So that part's Y. And my width, that's the part, that's the function. That's two square root of Y. Like if you told me the height was two uh, or one, I could plug it into here and tell you what the width is. The width would be two. So let me cut this one and unfold it. I'm going to cut it this way and unfold it. There's my change in y, right? That's the that's the lip. It's this part. This is the circumference of the circle. So 2 pi times y. This is the function 2 root y and I'm on my way to set this up. Uh, integral and I have my y values from 0 to 4, right? Everything's in terms of y for this rotation around the x. 0 to 4, and then it's just the volume of this, of these shapes. So 2 pi y times uh, 2 square root of y dy. And that is not too bad. That's all set up. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull out the constants, the 2y and the, and the 2. So this would be 4 pi running from 0 to 4 of y times square root of y dy. Now, in some cases, you're going to have to do a substitution to do the integral. In this case, you can just multiply those together, right? Y, the square root of y is y to 1 half. y is uh, 2 halves. And so this would be 4 pi integral from 0 to 4, y to the 3 halves. dy, do it and you're, you're on your way. You're, you're in good shape for you get 256 pi over 5, uh, and again, units are cubed. All right, I'm going to do uh, one more example and a little extension on that example. All right, so uh, y equals 9x squared to the y-axis. x is going to run from 0 to 2. We're going to rotate over x. So it's going to be like this, over to the x, uh, to the y-axis. So it looks like that, and rotate over x. So the rotation, notice, is going this way. This looks familiar. Very familiar shape uh, to what we just did. But notice what's going on here. Um, we're rotating over x. So our disks are going to be from a change. I'm sorry, our cylinders are going to be from a change in y but nothing else is in terms of y. So let's fix that. Um, so first off, uh, divide by nine, square root. We're just gonna take the positive part. Uh, square root of y over three, so one third root y. So there's our function. And then also, x is running from zero to two, so that means that y would run from, well, still zero, but then if I plug a two into here, two squared four up to 36. All right, so there's my pieces uh, that I need. I should jot that down. Why is running? So rotate over X, and I get uh, this disk. So let me pull that out of there. That part right there is my change in Y. Um, the radius of it, that's y. And it's like the height, right? And then the width of it, this part right here is, uh, yeah, this part right here, this edge, is the function. So let me cut that. I'll cut it here, uh, fold it out. This rectangle that I'm just drawing mammoth uh, for some reason. That thickness is the change in y. Um, this is what was the the width, the going out part, square root of y over three, or one third root y. Um, and then this is the circumference of the circle, so two pi times y. 
So if I think about the volume of this shape, it would be 2 pi times y times 1 third square root of y dy. And I've got that integral. I'm going to let it run over the y values 0 to 36. So if I clean this up a little bit, I've got uh, 2 thirds pi. And then y times square root of y is y to the uh, 3 halves dy. And you work out that integral uh, however you like. What if x, instead of running from uh, 0 to 1, runs from um, 0 to 2, runs from 1 to 2? So let me recopy some of this information. So I know that x equals uh, square root of y over 3. And notice if x runs from 1 to 2, that means y runs from, plug in a 1, 9 to 3. And so my shape then looks like this. And I am only going to shade it to where x was 1. So here's the thing that's getting rotated. Again, rotated over the x-axis. So it's this shape with this kind of funny uh, limitation in it. This is getting up to 36. This is only getting down to 9. And it has this hole like all the way through it like this. And so I still have change relative to x. I'm sorry, uh, relative to y. I pull that over. So if I pull that out, I still have this change in y. My radius is still y. But now, how about this? How long is this right here? So I'm going to redraw some of this. So this is our curve, square root of y over 3. This is at 1, and this is at 2. And notice what we did was we, we grabbed this right here. So that is this part. So this uh, square root of y over 3, that's actually this distance. But my actual width isn't that long. It's shorter. Notice it's off by 1, right? Like this distance from here to here is 1. The blue distance, I think it's blue. could be purple. Uh, and Because I can't tell the difference. But this black distance is... Uh, root y over 3. So if I want to know how long that, that red part is, it's actually root y over 3 minus 1. And that's subtle, but it's a good drawing or a decent drawing <laughs> and good visualization uh, will, will help you. So notice now if I go to write the, the volume for this, I'm going to cut it here still and draw it out. So there's my change in y. This side is the circumference of this spread out, right? So 2 pi times y. And then now, this distance right here is that minus 1, right? Because it's not all the way. It's just to there. Okay, so now my volume is uh, these things multiplied together. 2 pi times y times uh, root y over 3 minus 1 times that. And then I'm going to run that from 9 to 36. And you can work that on out. Uh, pull out that 2 pi. I'm just going to get like the first part here. Distribute that y into there. So y to the 3 halves. Uh, I might write this times a third. Minus y dy. And you're good to go. Um, and you'll get your answer however you do it. That's what you should be getting as your answer. Uh, one thing I might do, I might put the 2 back in here because then I wouldn't, when I take this integral of y, I don't have to compensate for the 1 half. Like I might, I might actually, and again, you don't have to do this, but it's just one less fraction to deal with here. And why not? Okay, uh, give these problems a try. Take your time with them. The trick is the setup. Like, take your time setting up. Draw your picture all the way out. Draw the shape. 
draw the rotation, draw the cylinder, cup the cylinder, write the parts, uh, and you'll get to a point where you can really, really start to visualize it. Uh, next time, what we'll do is we'll build on this to think about if we have to like subtract a curve from a curve for this method. All right, post me any questions that you have, uh, message me, put them in the forum, and uh, do that practice work. This is this is good, fun, rewarding practice. Uh, it is not easy.